Hello and welcome to a video on histograms. In this video we're going to be looking at constructing histograms using some data that has been given to us here. So if we look at this information it says the frequency table below gives information about the books sold in a second-hand bookshop on the same Saturday. So here we've got the amount spent in the shop and here we've got the frequency so this is the total number of people. So for example 80 people spent between zero and five pounds 20 people spent between five and 10 pounds, 24 people spent between 10 and 20 pounds, and 96 people spent between 20 and 40 pounds. Now, the first thing that pops out to me is that we've got different price brackets here. Okay, if we take a look at this price bracket, these are all the people who spent between 20 and 40 pounds. So it would have included people who spent 23 pounds, 25 pounds, 30 pounds, or even 40 pounds. Whereas if we look at this top bracket, this is only people who spent between zero and five pounds. So it's quite a very, it's a very narrow um, price bracket to be looking at. So when we are looking at these figures for the frequency, although the frequency is highest for this category, that makes sense because it's got, it's the widest or it's got the largest range between the lower and the upper bounds. So it's likely that it's going to have a higher frequency compared with this number here. So it's quite hard to compare, at the, mo at the moment it's quite hard to compare these frequencies because they have different um, price brackets or we would say they have different class intervals. So we need to come up with a way of comparing the data that is fair and that um, compensates for this smaller and this larger class interval. And how we do that is we look at something called the frequency density. So frequency density. Okay. And how we work that out, we take the frequency. So it's the frequency. And we divide that by the class interval. We call that the class interval. Okay. The class interval. And doing that compensates or allows for the differences between the class intervals to make it fair. Okay, so if you're still a bit confused about that and about confused about why we calculate the frequency density as opposed to just looking at the frequency, I always like to think of population density. So if we think about a population of a country and we'll use the UK because we live in the UK, so UK population, all right, pop for short. Now, at the point of recording this video, we are approximately at 68 million in the UK. Give or take a few. So there's 68 million people in the UK. Now, if we think of a larger country, so I'm going to use Russia as another example because Russia is a very large country. And in fact, I think it's the largest country in the world. So the population of Russia, you would think it would be more than a lot more than 68 million because it's a much larger country. And it is indeed larger than the UK population. There is 147 million people currently living in Russia. Now that makes sense because it's a larger country. You would expect that to happen. So it's not very fair comparing these two values because we know that if you've got a larger land um, area, it's likely that you've got a bigger population. So in order to compensate for the um, larger land area, we would calculate the population density. Okay, this will give us a much better idea of the population in a particular country. Now the density in the UK, so this is per per square kilometer, there are 280 people per square kilometer. So for every one col square kilometer, there are 280 people. Now if we compare it to Russia, in Russia, there are only nine people per square kilometre. So you can see that although the population is greater for Russia, because they've got a larger land area, the density is actually smaller. So if you think about the density as being the amount of people squished into a particular area, the density is greater for the UK compared to Russia. And these values here are a lot more meaningful than just the absolute population values. So that is another reason why we look at density. So this is population density, or we talk about frequency density in this situation, and that would be to allow for the different class intervals here. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the frequency density for this data. So let's do that. So FD for frequency density. So we take the frequency and we divide it by the class interval. So here we've got 80 divided by the class interval, which is just 5. Because 0 to 5 is a difference of 5. So 18 divided by 5 gives us 16. Now if we look at the next one, we've got 20. And we're dividing that by 5 again. And that will give us 4. The next column, we've got frequency of 24. This time, the class interval is 10. So it's a larger class interval. And our frequency density is therefore 2.4. And finally, our class interval here is 20. So 96 divided by 20, that gives us 4.8. And now, instead of using the frequency, instead of plotting the frequency, we're going to plot the frequency density. So on the y-axis, we've got frequency density. And we're going up to, I think, 16 is our maximum value. So we'll do steps of 5. We can go up to 20. And now we're going to plot the frequency density on this graph. And you can already probably see that the frequency density is actually greatest for the 0 to 5 category, which was different to what we originally had. So it's really important to understand why we calculate the frequency density. OK, so I'm going to get my line tool to do this. So in the 0 to 5 category, our frequency density is 16. So we're going to go up to 16. Okay, I'll make that a bit thinner. And then I'm just going to go along to the y-axis. Okay, and now we'll do the second category. So 5 to 10, our frequency density is 4. So we're going to go up to 4. And then along. And then the next category, this time the interval is 10. So we're going up to 20. And... 1, 2, 2.4 is roughly there. Again, this is not perfect, but hopefully you get the idea. And then finally, our last category, we're going all the way up to 40 this time, and our frequency density is 4.8, so I'm just going to go a bit below 5. And then come along. And I'm just going to finish that off by just coming down here. And we are done. We've calculated or we've constructed our histogram. So what we did, the first thing to do is to calculate the frequency density. So, so we do frequency divided by the class interval to give us our frequency density. And now, and sorry, then we plot the frequency density against our price. So well, in this case, our price or whichever variable you've got down here. OK, and that is how we, we construct a histogram. OK, so this um, equation you'll need to remember. So really important. And again, this is to calculate frequency density. If you want to calculate frequency, that's just the frequency density multiplied by the class interval. And if you wanted to calculate the class interval and you have the frequency and the frequency density, well, you just do the frequency density divided, sorry, the frequency divided by the frequency density. And again, this is a bit like one of your speed, distance, and time formulae, which you can just rearrange. Okay, so in the next video, we're just going to get some more practice at constructing histograms using frequency density.